1 Kings chapter 21. So everybody's there, all right? 1 Kings chapter 21. I want you to notice here, it's, it's kind of a well-known story in the Word of God. Verse 1 says, It came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house. And I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or, if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. So we're going to leave off reading there. I want to invite you, if you will, to bow your heads and let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask His blessing on the service today. Heavenly Father, Lord, I uh, realize my need of you this morning as I stand to preach. And Lord, I believe this is what you want me to preach today. And Lord, I just ask you to give me the right words. Help me to say exactly what you would have said today. And use it to speak to every heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This passage of Scripture has, this chapter I might say, has been the text of many a sermon. Uh, probably the most famous is that of a man by the name of R.G. Lee. R.G. Lee Pat preached and used this passage Amen. of Scripture. And he preached a very famous sermon that he personally preached hundreds and hundreds of times. And it was entitled Payday Sunday. Right. And if you've never heard the sermon, I'd encourage you to go online and look it up. You can find it Amen. and listen to it. Man, it'd be a blessing and a challenge to your heart. But uh, And he's not the only one, but man, he's preached a sermon from it. And fantastic message. And, and many other people have used it. And, and, and it'll be used again. And I, I didn't go look. It's possibly possible that I've preached from it too. But if I have, this is not the same message, okay? Uh, because I didn't go back and look. But what I want to do is I want to focus on this passage a little bit differently. Normally when this message is preached, the focus is on Ahab and Jezebel. That's true. They use this chapter and that's where the focus is on. It, it is on Ahab and his wife Jezebel and what they did. Yeah. But this morning, what I want to do is I want to draw your attention to Naboth, all right? Amen. Naboth, uh, a man who is really the hero here, all Amen. right? He's the hero in this passage of Scripture, but he oftentimes gets overlooked right. because there's just something about people. We, we overlook the good, and we get amazed, if you will, or influenced by the great wickedness and the great evil that somebody does. And that's where we find our focus. But this morning I want us to focus on Naboth. Because really and truly I want to preach to you on the subject of we need more Nabots. Okay? We just need more Nabots. Alright? So if you'll stay with me this morning. First of all, look at the circumstances behind this. Alright? Behind what happened. On the surface, if you will, it appears that Ahab comes along and the Bible says this vineyard was right next to his palace and, and there must have been something about it that really impressed Ahab and, and he was impressed by it. So he looked up the man that owned it and he went to Naboth and you know, you, you read here what he says there and he says, listen, I want, uh, I want you to let me have your vineyard. Now it, it says, give me thy vineyard, but not in the sense we would say give it. He says... What I'll do is I'll give you another vineyard that's better than that one for yours. He said, if you don't want it that way, I'll pay you money for it. All right? Amen. I'll give you a good price for it. And, uh, you know, I'll either swap you a better vineyard or give you a lot of money. And so you look at that, and on the surface, that looks like a good deal. It looks like a good thing, you know. Um, but I want to warn you, you can't always trust the appearance of things. Just because it looks good doesn't mean it's a good thing. Amen. And, and I want you to see this. Uh, we look on the other hand, that's Ahab. We look at Naboth. It'd be easy to make the accusation, hey, Naboth, what in the world is wrong with you? Come on. Yeah, come on. Man, here's a guy that's, this is the king 
and he's offering you the deal of a lifetime. Right. The right. deal of a lifetime. I don't know if y'all are like me, but I get periodically uh, cards in the mail that offering to buy my house. And I've even got phone calls offering to buy my house. And I've decided the next phone call I get, I'm going to accept the offer. I'm going to say, you give me a quarter of a million dollars, it's yours. <laughs> and you say, preacher, your house worth that? No, but if they'll give it, I'll sell it. All right. Uh, you know, I'll take that for it. You know, don't want to sell it, but if they'll give me a quarter of a million dollars, I would do it. Well, you know, it's easy to look at Naboth and say, Naboth, what's wrong with you? Man, you're just a sentimental old fool. I mean, you know, just maybe because that property, you know, you've been around and you've had it for a while. And here's a chance for you to better yourself. Right. You could get a better vineyard. And let's face it, it's the king offering you this deal. He can give you a better one. That's right. He could do that. And if you don't want the property, just think, take the big cash payout and yeah. retire. Amen. Yeah. And do move down to the coast and enjoy the beach or whatever, all right? So we look at Nabob, you could look at him and think that. But I want you to see this this morning. That's the circumstances. But I want you to see that the circumstances are always outweighed by convictions. Convictions. And this is the thing that's lacking in so many people in our day. Nabob had some convictions. Oh, yeah. Had some convictions. He was a man of principle. Principle. Now, not just something he had invented, but because of the Bible. You have your Bible. Now, we don't understand this kind of thing. Alright? It's hard for us to put ourselves in this position. But take your Bible there and go back to Numbers chapter oh. 36. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, numbers. Now, don't lose your place there in First Kings. I should have said that before I said turn, shouldn't I? Don't lose your place there in First Kings 21. All right, but go back to Numbers chapter 36, and, and I, I just want you to see. You know, I want you to understand the circumstances were not what they appeared to be. It wasn't just the king offering a good deal and, and some uh, sentimental old fool that wouldn't take the deal. All right. But if you've got Numbers 36 there in one hand, I want you to look again at Naboth's answer to Ahab. He said in verse 3, The Lord forbid it me, notice that I should give, here's the way he says it, the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. The inheritance of my fathers unto thee. Now, Numbers 36, you there? Look at verse 7. Here's the law of Moses. Amen. Numbers 36, verse 7. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe. Right. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of Amen. his father. Yes, hey, this was a scriptural oh. principle Amen. that Naboth was sticking with. Amen. Nabon said, man, look, I can't do that. I cannot do that. Now, I have a hard time parting with things that belong to my dad. <laughs> or, or to my granddad. For instance, there's uh, my, my mom has at her house two uh, cowhide bottom chairs. They're wooden chairs, and you look at them and tell them babies are old. Right. And uh, I, they're there, and uh, she's talked about it. And I said, "Now you know you don't get rid of them. They don't go anywhere." So why not? Because my grandpa, her daddy, made them, put the bottoms in them. Now you say, "Well, they don't mean anything to me," but you're not me. And it ain't your grandpa, all right? It's my grandpa that did that, all right? She, we've also got some lamps in the family that are made from a wagon wheel. But they were made from the wagon wheel that my other grandpa uh, yeah. used to court his, the, my grandma. All right? All right. So it means something to us. I don't want to part with them. Amen. But I can tell you this, there's no scripture that keeps me from doing it. No, sir. That's right. 
no scripture that keeps me from doing it. But Naboth's case was different. Naboth said, hey, you wait a minute. He said, you're asking me to violate the scripture. You're asking me to violate the command of God. He said, I can't do that. That was the principle. You know, it's amazing to me, a lot of people understand the principle, but when it comes time to practice that principle, we're not as good at practicing as we are understanding. There's a lot of people today that lay claim to believe in the Bible. And believe in what the Bible says as far as how we ought to live and how we ought to conduct ourselves and our business. But when it comes to actually putting that into practice, man, we seem to struggle with it. We just have a hard time, all right? But Naboth was a man of principle. He was a man of principle. He was a man of faith. And he was a man that had the courage to go along with his faith. And I want you to see it this morning. I said we need more Naboths, all right? Uh, Now remember who came and wanted the property. It wasn't Cousin Bill somewhere. It wasn't some fellow from down the country that was just a rich dude that had a lot of money. It was the king. It was the king that came along and said, Listen, I want you to give me your vineyard. Mm -hmm. And I'll make you a deal for it. But I'll tell you, here's Naboth. Naboth elevated the scriptural command over the compelling of man. Oh my soul, should we not live that way? Should we not live that way? Now remember, Ahab was king. And by the way, he wasn't known for any good thing. Go back to 1 Kings chapter 16. 1 Kings chapter 16. <clears throat> you want to sum up Ahab? Here it is, verse 30. 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 30. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. Above all that were before him. Ahab did that. You talk about a life, this guy lived a life that was evil above everybody that had ever come before him. You understand what I'm saying? Very wicked man. A man that was not above doing anything to get his own way. But Naboth looked at him and said, I've got a command of God. God has commanded me. And Naboth feared God over man. Amen. Listen to me, here's the problem. We fear man rather than God. We fear man rather than God. And when we ought to live by the principles of the Word of God, we begin to think, what is so-and-so going to think of it? What are they going to say? Let me tell you something. You need to quit worrying about what somebody else thinks. You need to begin to think about what God thinks. What does he say about it? What is his desire for me? For me. It's his desire for me that we ought to be concerned about, all right? It's what he says that ought to concern us, that ought to motivate us, that ought to draw us to say, hey, there's things we ought to do, and we're going to do what he says. We're going to do what he says. Hey, we're not going to do what man says. We're going to do what God says. We live in a time, though, where people don't consider that. We look and we think, well, what's legal? Right. But it's not what's legal. What does God say? Yeah. What does God say? Hey, look, we need more Naboths that will say, I need to check out the Scripture. Uh I need to check out the Scripture. But instead, we live in a time where people think about their pocket in their bank account, and if there's a buck in it, we'll overlook what God says. Yes. Right. We'll overlook what God says. Hey, listen, I don't believe a child of God ought to ever be involved in any kind of work that involves the, the sale and the distribution of any kind of alcoholic beverage. Amen. Nothing. I, I don't believe you ought to get a job and work in a restaurant where you're bringing booze to somebody. Amen. Or not to do it. I don't believe you ought to drive the beer truck, okay? Amen. I don't believe you ought to do those things. I believe you ought to put a principle up And say, hey, God has said we're not to touch that stuff. We're not to look at it. And and we're to stay away from it. And he said, woe unto the man that put it at the bottom to his neighbor's lips. Right. Right. 
then you and I ought to look at that and say, you know, I believe God means what he says. Amen. We're to do what he says. Naboth was that kind of man. Naboth was the kind of man that could look the king in the face and say, I can't do it because God says I'm not to do it. Not only that, but he took his convictions over cash. He couldn't be bought. Could not be bought. Man, we live in a day where we worship money. Oh, yeah. Now, preacher, I don't do that. It's one thing to say it. It's another thing to live it. Yeah. But we do. We, we live in a day where we worship money, and, and we think, you know, that I... And the truth is, most people sell out cheap. Well, sir. We sell out cheap. Not Naboth. Naboth said, no way. No way. I'm not going to do that. I'll give you a personal experience. I've told it to the kids in school. When I was a senior in high school, I was sitting down with a school counselor. And I don't even remember why this came up, but I was sitting down with a school counselor, and I said to him, um, they, they asked me, said, oh, what are you going to do? What are you going to college? And I said, well, I think I'm going to go to college, and I'm going to become a teacher. And go to college, study to become a teacher. Here's the next phrase out of the mouth of a school counselor. They said to me, you're too smart for that. <laughs> now, let that soak in a minute, will you? Oh, brother. Yes, sir. That is an educator telling me you're too smart to be an educator. <laughs> I wanted to say, you know, I had a suspicion about some of the teachers I had. They were a bunch of dummies, weren't they? But I didn't think it'd be appropriate to say that, you know? But that is exactly what she said. Now, the reason she said that to me, you know what the saying was? You can make more money. That's it. Yes, sir. You can make more money. I wonder what she'd have done if I'd have told her I'm going to be an independent Baptist preacher. Oh. She probably would have said, you can definitely make more money, all right, than that. But, uh, hey, listen, you can't sell your life out for cash. Come on. Can't sell your convictions. Naboth was the kind of man that said, you know what? You can't buy me off. Right. I'll not swap my convictions for cash. Just won't do it. Another thing about the convictions of Naboth that I really like is he was a man that knew how and when to say no. To say no. Would you look in your Bible again there, 1 Kings chapter 21. <clears throat> the offer is made in verse 2. <clears throat> The answer is made in verse 3, and there's nothing in between. That's right. Amen. You say, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying this. When Naboth, when Naboth made his, when Ahab made his offer to Naboth, Naboth did not say, let me think about it. No, sir. Amen. No, sir. Let right, me right. think about it. He didn't say, well, give me a few minutes. He didn't say, give me a week or two. Nope. Uh, he never even considered the offer. And he didn't consider, well, let me make a counter offer to you. Nope. Didn't do any of that. Instead, old Naboth, he just said, no. Well, can I say this to you? That's the way to do it. You never hesitate to say no when it's a matter of conviction. Amen. It's a matter of conviction. Now, when I was a kid, I had some convictions. My convictions were what my dad said. I believed what he said. He said, why? Because if I didn't, he would encourage me. All right? And I believed what he believed, and if that was what he said, then that was the way it is. But you know what? Over time, I began to understand. I began to understand. You know, I understand why dad has those convictions. I understand why he's as, as narrow-minded as he is. Oh, yes. right. I, I see what he is, and I understand what he is, and I see what he says, and there's a Bible reason for it. Amen. And I believe this morning that I believe everything that my dad believed, all right, right down the line, but I don't believe it now because dad said it. I believe it now because the Bible says it. And I have learned that, man, when you have to deal with somebody and you, you, they want you to do wrong, they want you to go wrong, the only way to deal with it is to say, no! Amen. Amen. You won't do it. 
It's not good to say, well, I don't think that's a good idea. You see, if you equivocate just a tiny bit, that person will stay after you. Right. Ever been on one of those, uh, ever been on one of those deals where they're timeshare presentation, they want to sell you a timeshare? Now, I'm not against you buying a timeshare at all, all right? As long as you let me use it occasionally. Uh, <laughs> no, I was just kidding. I, I'm not against you doing it, but I mean, I've sat to some of them and those guys are, they're, they're tremendous salesmen. Amen. They have got a marvelous pitch. And, and if you're not just blunt with them, they stay after you. They stay after you. If you, if, if you say, well, you know, I just don't think that's for me. That's not no. That doesn't mean no to me. Now, I do things like that trying to be nice. I say it that way rather than saying, hey, Jack, you got to be kidding. I'm not interested in this piece of junk. I don't want to stay in your place. I don't want to buy in your resort. Where's that free gift you promised me? Amen. Yeah. I think that's the only reason I was there, okay? Where is that? Yes, sir. But, you know, you try to be nice, but you can't. Hey, listen, you can't be, you, you can't worry about those things when you're dealing with convictions. If you believe something from the Word of God, we need more people like Naboth that will just stand and say, no. No. You know what? Ahab went away convinced he meant it. Look at verse 4, all right? Verse 4, and Ahab came to his house heavy and displeased because of the Word of which Naboth, the Jezreelite, had spoken to him. <laughs> he said, man, he meant it. He meant it. You know, and Jezebel could see that he was upset. In verse 5, she comes out, oh, what's wrong with you? Yep. And he's going, oh, I'm going to sell me his plans. Uh, you know why? Because he understood Naboth's no meant no. No. Look, we need more Naboths. We need more people to stand up and do what the Word of God says. Do what the Word of God says. I think of our Vice President. I think of our Vice President, uh, Mr. Pence, where he was maligned. He was mocked. He was made fun of by the news media. When, when he you know, came out where he said, I don't go and eat lunch by myself with another woman. Amen. And, and everybody, you know, on the news, they just castigated him to no end. But man, it was amazing. Just a few weeks later, we get all these accusations of, you know, sexual improprieties and all of that kind of stuff from all of these people. But none of those newscasters came up and said, you know, Vice President Pence from Smart Dude. Oh, no. It never came back. But you know what? Man, the principle. Man, the principle. We need more of that. We need more of that. We need people that have got convictions. They believe something because of what the Word of God says. They believe it. And they stand on that. And that was Naboth's whole reason for telling Ahab, I can't even think of selling it to you. Because I can't give up my father's inheritance. Because the Bible, the Word of God, commands me not to do it. Not to do it. Circumstances are always at the, should always be at the whim of conviction. But let me say this to you. This is the real world. Convictions can carry a cost. They come with a cost. You know, uh, it, it will cost you something. Now, I know today people like a religion of convenience. We like a religion of convenience and no cost and, and just where it doesn't cost me anything and I can just be religious and, it'll, and it can be convenient. But I'll tell you, that's not the way the real thing works. It's just not the way the real thing works. I, this story is not one of those stories in the Bible that winds up with a happy ending. All right? It doesn't wind up that way. Uh, if you decide to follow the Lord, it'll always cost you something. I'm not going to stand here in front of you and say, boy, if you do what God says, you'll always live happily ever after. You won't. Now, there's stories in the Bible where they did, but it doesn't always wind up that way. It always costs you if you're going to follow the Lord. You remember what the Lord told His disciples? 
He said to them in, in Luke chapter 9 and verse 23, He said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily and follow me. Listen, I'm not preaching to you and promising you that if you do what God says, it'll always be wonderful and that there'll never be a cost and you'll always just, it, it'll, it'll just be smooth sailing. That's not true. That's not true. You say, what happened to Naboth? If you're not familiar with what happened to Naboth, it cost him his life. It cost him his life. You said, because he wouldn't sell? Yep. Because he wouldn't sell his vineyard. Because he wouldn't swap his vineyard. Man, old Ahab went home and whined about it. And Jezebel got involved. She said, don't worry about it. I can fix it. And she fixed it. She brought out those that lied about Naboth. They took Naboth out and they stoned him to death. And she came to Ahab and said, see, you can have the vineyard now. He said, what happened to Naboth? Well, his conviction cost him his life. Right. Cost him his life. Lied about it, stoned to death, just so Ahab could have that vineyard. Listen, it cost Daniel a trip to the den of lions. Amen. It cost the three Hebrews some time in the fiery furnace. Right. Now, the problem is, that was a happy ending in those two. That's true. Right. It was a happy ending. Mm -hmm. Now, let's face it. Let's face it. If you were facing that fiery furnace, how confident would you be? No problem. I'll carry me some weenies and marshmallows and we'll have a good time while we're in there. <laughs> Probably wouldn't. We'd figure it's going to kill us. It's going to kill us. Yeah, I know, I know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they went through the fiery furnace. They didn't die. It didn't even singe their clothes, their hair, right. no problem. But wait a minute, it did cost Naboth his life. That's right. Yes, sir. He stood for his convictions, and it cost his life. Daniel stood for his convictions. It cost him a trip to the den of lions. It cost him a night there with them, but he came out all right. Oh, yeah. It cost those three Hebrews some time in that fiery furnace. They didn't die, but Naboth did. Now let me say this to you, all right? Let me say this. If you stand for your convictions, it probably will not cost you your life. But it will cost you. Come on. It will cost you. I'm not going to get up here and preach to you. Everything will be hunky-dory if you live for God. It won't. You're going to face some trials. But I'm going to say this to you. Right. The reward, the pay, if you will, far outweighs any cost. Amen. Far outweighs any cost. And look at the, look at those three Hebrews. They went to the fiery furnace and they got to spend personal face-to-face -face time with the Son of God. That's right. Pretty good deal. Right. They enjoyed it. I'll tell you this, I believe, now there's no scripture for it, this is my belief, I believe old Daniel enjoyed a good night. Amen. All right, I believe he did. Now, you say, well, things didn't work out that good for Naboth. No. Cost him. Cost him. But I'll ask you this. Would you have ever heard of Naboth if he's a soul of his vineyard? We'd have never heard a thing about him. We'd have never known anything about him if he had just said, okay, that's the deal. We'll do it. Let's work out. I'll give you my lawyer and he can work out the pictures with you. You know, we'll sign the papers and we'll be good. We'd have never heard of Naboth. I'm going to tell you something. If Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had have decided, you know, everybody else is bowing, let's bow. It's not that big a deal, really, because worship is not a physical thing. It's a matter of the heart. We'll fake it, and we'll be okay. You know what? We'd have never heard of. We'd have never heard of. You said, preacher, who's going to hear of me? Well, I think your name will be known in heaven. I believe that. 
I believe one of these days, if you'll stand for your convictions, it'll bring the approval and it'll bring the well done from God. Amen. You will hear those two words, well done. Well done. And I'd say this to you, that's going to be worth a lot. Oh, yeah, that's going to be worth a lot. Uh, 54 years ago, 54 years ago, I was in the fourth grade at Edgewood Elementary School in Fort Myers, Florida. And in a fourth grade, excuse me, let me back that up. I think it was 53 years ago when I was in the fifth grade. But it's one of those. After that many years, I'm not positive, okay? But it's one of those. And I won Citizen of the Year award. And they gave me a trophy for Citizen of the Year. And I have it still. The little plastic thing. Just cheap plastic. They couldn't even buy me a good trophy. <laughs> a stinking piece of plastic. And it's not engraved. It had a place in there where you could put a piece of paper. And they typed on the piece of paper that I won Citizen of the Year, and they put my name on it, and they glued it to that stupid piece of plastic. <laughs> Guess what? Over 50 plus years, that pla that glue comes loose. Now the paper's not even stuck to it anymore. <laughs> and nobody knows. 54 years ago, I was the Citizen of the Year, except you, because I told you. Right. And you're going to forget it. Amen. And you know what? Fine. Right. That doesn't amount to nothing. Right. I'm going to tell you, maybe years ago you won some award. You got some little trophy. And you gloated and you glorified over it. That's not going to be worth a hill of beans. But you hear it. Come on. One of these days you'll stand before God. Yes, sir. Amen. One of these days you'll stand before God. And if you have lived by Bible convictions Amen. and practiced those principles in that book, one day you'll hear him say, Well done, Amen. thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Let me tell you something. That's going to be better than stinking little piece of plastic. Oh, That's going to be so much better than a trophy. Amen. That's going to be better, so much better than a momentary time of party where people said, aren't you wonderful? Yeah. How good it is to think that one day we'll hear that hey. from our Lord. Hey, had Naboth sold out, we'd have never heard of him. But because he wouldn't, his name's in the Bible. And we've been reading about Naboth now for centuries. Amen. For centuries. Because he was a man of conviction. I'll be honest, I think that's why we don't hear a lot of, about a lot of Christians today. Because we sell out too easy. Right. We sell out too easy. God help us to have more like Naboth that are able and willing to stand on their convictions from the Word of God and say, this is what I'm going to do. Hey, it's not enough to profess to believe something. It's something you have to practice. I will stand for what God says. Hey, it may cost you something. It may cost you friends. It'll cost you favor with the world. But the Lord will see to it that reward is worth it. There's an old skinny fellow tall, skinny fellow that used to be down in South Texas that nobody would have heard of except among Baptist people. Nobody would have known him. But the state moved in on him and said, we're going to close your homes if you don't get a license. And this old skinny fellow named Lester Roloff said, I've got the license I need. It's right here. It's right here. And I don't need your license. I've got God's permission and His approval. And, and that supersedes everything the state can do. You know what? 
the whole country heard about it. Oh, it was on the news all over the country. And they went there and they stood, and the, the news media stood with the cameras and they talked to him. Hey, you know why? Because he stood Amen. for his convictions. Amen. He stood for them. Listen, will you do that? First of all, do you even believe anything? Come on. What do you really believe? That you're willing, if necessary, to die for it. You believe it. You die for that. Listen, this old book's true. It's mocked today, it's made fun of, it's legislated against. But you and I say we believe it. Then we ought to be willing to stand for it. We ought to be willing to stand on it. Hey, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are. The circumstances don't change our convictions. We ought to take those convictions and say, I'll stand upon them. I don't care what it costs me. What it costs me. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what the cost is. And I'll tell you something. My dad stood for some convictions and it cost him a lot of friends. Right. Cost him a lot of friends. But he stood Oh, Dad, you and I have the opportunity to stand for the Word of God and say we're going to live what we claim to believe. But maybe the problem is you really don't believe anything. Maybe the problem is you've never really been born again. You see, that's where it starts. That's right. I'm only willing to stand on this book because the God of this book saved my soul. And because of that, I'm willing to stand for what He saved what kind of convictions do you have? Would you be the kind of person that old Naboth was? Would you have that kind of conviction? Or could you be bought? The world's filled with people that can be bought real cheap. Not me. I don't want to be cheap. I don't want to go down Christ cheap. I want to sell. How about you? Would you stand please with every head bowed and every eye closed this morning? Listen, the Lord needs, this whole world needs more Naboths. The world of Christianity needs more Naboths. Those that will stand for what God says. How about you? Are you one of those? Are you selling out? You sell out for a little bit of pleasure. Sell out the Word of God for just a little bit of pleasure, a little bit of popularity, a little bit of fun, a momentary thing, a few bucks here and there. What about you? We stand for what God says and do. Put it into practice in your life. Heavenly Father, I pray you deal with hearts. Lord, if there's one here this morning who's never trusted you as their Savior, would you give them the courage to step out and come forward today and say, I'm going to live for God. I'm going to give my life. I'll trust Him as my Savior. Lord, I'm going to live for Him. Or deal with us now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.